If you love Land Rover Discovery 1s and 2s as much as me and Mrs. Wizard do, this is definitely going to be a video that you want to watch. Let's get started. This is a 2004 Land Rover Discovery 2 HSE, and it's got a lot of miles on it. It's seen a lot of driving. It's getting kind of rough. It's getting up in the age, but it's still running and driving just fine. It's got a few things wrong with it, but I decided while it's here, we're fixing these few things. We would go over a list of things that you can expect that will probably need addressed if you're looking to buy a Discovery 1 or 2. These are starting to become popular. Uh, EuroAsian Bob tells me that he's starting to see them at auction and things going for way higher than they used to. They're becoming collectible again. I don't know if they ever were collectible, were they? You guys can let me know in the comments. But they definitely are beginning to be that way now. Most newer SUVs today, you buy them, are a bunch of plastic crap, just like in the video you guys just saw. And timing chains breaking and transmissions going out and people are getting tired of it. And they're like, I think I'll just go back to something a little older that's still very stylish and very cool with way less problems. But these still have some problems. So let's take a look around this thing real quick and then we're going to dive in to what you can expect to, things you should look at when you go to look at one of these. Here we are on this 2004 Land Rover front end and you can usually tell the, the final couple of years models as they're going down the road by the style of these headlights. They have these dual beams and they look a lot fancier. These ones are a little hazed over, but the customer has already informed me they're not interested in dumping $9,000 into this thing and restoring every little bits and bob and everything here and there. They just want to fix a few items and move it along. As we go down to this side, you can see on the bumper there's a little bit of a piece missing there. It's got some Krugen tires on it. You can see the A-pillar cladding is missing, or the trim, whatever you want to call that. It's actually missing on both sides. Not sure if that cracked or broke or some work's being done or a windshield. I don't know. I'm not sure why that's missing. It was missing when it was dropped off. As we go down this side, you can see that there's no rust or dents or anything going on. And most of the panels on here, I think, are made out of aluminum, or as they would say in the UK, aluminium. So that kind of helps with the rust. To come around to the back, we can see this is a Discovery 2. It's got quite a bit of length sticking out out the back compared to the Discovery 1s. And you can actually see that distance right here. It'd be from the bumper to the rear wheel. It's a lot longer on a Discovery 2. A Discovery 1 is like right here. It's quite a bit shorter. The tail lights are also located in different locations as well. Let's go ahead and jump under the hood. Here's our 4.6 liter V8, which is a derivative of the 4 liter V8, which is a derivative of the 3.9 V8, which is a derivative of the 3.5 Rover engine, which is a derivative of a Buick 215 all aluminum V8 from the 1960s. There is a long lineage of changes and things that have happened with this engine series. The Rover car company did buy this engine design from Buick way back in the 60s when it was a 215 V8. Problem number one with these, like I mentioned, they are a good engine except for head gaskets. We all know about the Land Rover head gaskets issue. They've had these issues for a long time and once you fix them once, they're usually good for the rest of the life of the car. It's just usually before the, the life is over. It will eventually happen. Tyler from Hoovy's Garage actually had a time when he had his dealership where we went through like 14 or 15 of these. He would on purpose go to auction and buy them with blown head gaskets. On purpose. He'd bring them to my shop. I would take care of it, get the heads reskimmed, new head gaskets and bolts, and take care of that issue once and for all. Otherwise, the rest of the vehicle was actually in very good condition. He would sell the vehicle, having been corrected, and then go buy another one. And then another one. And another one. We kept doing that for quite a long time. So it really worked out for him. So yes, head gaskets is a big issue with these. If you're looking to buy one of these, you might ask the seller, when's the last time you had head gaskets done? If he says it's never been done, 
it might very likely be you get to do them soon. So make sure to keep that in mind with doing the price negotiations. That is not the reason why this one is here. I don't know the history that far back on this vehicle if it's been done or not, but right now it doesn't have that issue with the head gaskets. If you're road testing and the temperature is either overheating really fast, that or it's not even registering, yet it's overheating, on the gauge that is, it's not registering, it's probably air pockets in the cooling system from a blown head gasket. It's hard for the sensor to read the temperature of the coolant when there's no coolant there, it's just combustion gases. We actually purchased one Mrs. Wizard that we drove it from Oklahoma. It was a white one, you remember that one? I love that one. Not the ride back though, but I do I remember that one quite well. It was a great car. The last hour or so it blew the head gaskets, of course. And I nursed at home, I had the heater on full blast. Every so often I'd add some coolant. It didn't hurt it luckily, it didn't overheat because I kept doing that regimen and I nursed it back home and it, it did okay. I fixed the head gaskets. That was my first set that I've ever done. And it was a good little ride after that, wasn't it, Mrs. Wizard? It was great in the snow. It was a great vehicle. These are great vehicles, but they do have their issues. Because it's based on the Buick design, which is multiple derivatives down the road to where this one is at now, it's actually a good engine except for the head gasket. Let's get this thing up in the air. There's not a whole lot more going on under here that would be common failure points. Again, there may be a few here or there that I may not list. I don't want this to be a five hour video. So let's go ahead and get this thing up in the air. One place that these like to leak on the Discovery Ones is the pivot balls, which on Discovery 2 right here, it doesn't have them. But here's a picture of what they look like. And those like to leak gear oil and things out of them. You'll see some leaks going on right there. They upgraded that in the Discovery 2 to actual CV shafts. You can see the boot right there and got rid of that problem. It was kind of problematic. A lot of vehicles use that style clear back to the 60s. Any kind of the Toyotas or NATO vehicles would have that type of style on it. That's definitely something to look at. If you're looking at Discovery 1, take a peek right through here. There'll be a shiny portion and see if there's just fluid pouring out of that. The next thing we're going to look at is the steering gearbox. These things love to leak at the steering gearbox. So I'll show you where these typically leak, especially on the Discovery ones, but they can leak on these as well. It's right here at the steering gearbox where the output shaft is. There's a seal and you will literally lose an entire quart of power steering fluid in a week. It'll just be pouring out, dripping all over right here. Those typically, the bushings inside get worn out and it wallers and this is loose here and then the seal can't seal anymore. And it needs to be either refurbished or replaced. I usually just replace them. That would take care of that. Some people would actually put Lucas power steering stop leak in there and it may work. It may get you by for a little while, but it will start leaking again. It's definitely not a guaranteed thing. So that's definitely a leak area. The pivot balls are a leak area on the Discovery 1. So let's move back to the engine oil pan. Here we can see the valve cover gaskets are leaking. It's just basically the entire oil pan. A lot of places they're just oil dripping. It's all coming from up above at the valve cover gaskets. Very common leak on these, but I wanted to wait to show you down below where it's coming from. That's something up above you will have to do as well. Here's our transmission. They don't typically give a lot of trouble. I think it's an HP 22, if I'm not mistaken. They definitely need to be serviced. I would say at 100,000 miles, you definitely want to service those, put new fluid and filter. Here's a double carden joint on our drive shaft. You definitely want to make sure those get greased on the inside. But it's not really a high failure point or anything. But if they do fail, they can flail around and do a lot of damage. Here's another common leak point on these. It is the transfer case. You can see this one is leaking as well. It's coming out of this gasket right here. Very common for these to leak. Here's our little rear drive shaft. It actually has a flex disc on it. That one's got a few cracks in it. It might stand to be replaced. We'll let the customer know. But these models you can see in like 034, I think, range, maybe a little earlier. They have airbags in the back. We're starting to turn into a Range Rover or an LR3 slowly, but we're not there yet. So we'll just have these in the back. It's kind of a load leveling, really. 
So if you hook a trailer or something to it, it doesn't sink the rear end so bad. It can lift itself back up. And they don't give a whole lot of trouble, but when they do fail, the rear end will sag a little bit and you'll know you need to service this system. The system's not as bad as an LR3. I mean, it's not the entire shock and strut and everything needs to be replaced. The airbag is separate from the shock. You can see there, there's one right next to one another. So if the shocks were bad, you don't have to worry about the airbag or vice versa, especially on the front of an LR3. Let's go ahead and get this thing back on the ground. Something that's very common on Discovery 1 and 2 is something called the Three Amigos. No, it's not that movie from back in the 80s. It's actually three little warning signs that will come up whenever there's traction control or ABS or any kind of issues like that. And some people will actually pull their hair out trying to get those to go away. Let me show you. This one actually does that. This one actually has quite a bit of Amigos going on, but it's traction control, ABS, and heel descent, a lot of things going on, several issues all going on at once. So as you just saw, this thing is approaching 110,000 miles. Now a Land Rover Discovery, especially if you take them off-road and use them for what they're meant for, they're not going to be a vehicle that goes to 450,000 miles. They're not known to do that. Can they do it? Possibly. Maybe some of you have some that have gone that far. But they, sh they are definitely not known to do that. That being said, I really enjoy these vehicles. You just have to know a few things about them before you go and purchase them. Some of the common issues they can have between the head gaskets, steering gearbox leaks, transfer case leaks, three Amigos. I mean, I really could go on a lot more of issues they have. But some of the basics that we've experienced with the ones we've owned and I've heard from many other owners. They're very capable off-road, very, very good. The axles are very soft, they can flex, they can go over obstacles really easily. They got decent low down torque with the V8, and I think they look really nice, they look really cool. The issue that's going on with the Three Amigos or Four Amigos, whatever you want to call it on the Discovery 2, we connected the scan tool and checked out the transmission control module and also ABS system and found that this left front speed sensor is not registering, it's dead. That can cause a slew of issues. It can cause the shifting strategy to change. The speed sensors aren't all reading correctly. That definitely can make those warnings come up. We're going to take a look at replacing that and very likely it will take care of those problems. He says it's low on power, but really what's going on is it's not shifting properly. It's not downshifting. It's not doing the things it should because those warnings are all on. He also wants us to check the spark plugs. There's a coolant leak going on, one of the little coolant elbows. Check the differential transfer case fluid levels, make sure they're full. The valve cover leaks, and that's pretty much all he wanted done. Well, we'll let him know some of the other issues we found on the vehicles and see if he wants to fix them. But again, with the high miles that it has, I think he's just trying to manage and keep this thing on the road for quite a while longer, but not interested in doing a full restoration and bring it back to its full glory. That's not what he's interested in doing. This customer owns several Land Rovers. He knows Land Rovers. This one was used for hauling the kids around, a little bit of off-roading or things here or there. It's not the one he wants to keep pristine. It was the one that was used as a tool and it has been used pretty well many many miles on this thing so hopefully this video can help you guys out if you're looking at a discovery one or two this will give you some of the big items to check really fast you can get a flashlight like kind of like the one i have and with four or five items you can deduce really fast if it's going to be a major repair bill or if it can just drive and enjoy it if you're a gearhead these are great you can wrench on them yourself it's a general motors v8 it's not hard I've heard of many shops turning these down. The customer says, hey, I got a 04 Land Rover, and the shop owner cuts them short right there and says, nope, those engines are complex. They're hard to work on. That's got all special tools. No, I ain't working on that. It's not special tools. It's a Buick V8 from 1964 or something. It does have engine management systems on them now, fuel injection and everything. It's a push rod General Motors V8. It is not hard. But I wanted to share one of me and Mrs. Wizard's favorite vehicles. We do enjoy them. We've actually been scanning lately, see if we can get a cheap one that needs some work and fix it up. 
But this one will fix a few items. We'll see if the customer wants to do the rest, and otherwise it'll be out the door pretty quick. So I definitely want to do a video for you guys. If you're curious what kind of tools we're going to use to work on this Discovery 2, check our Amazon affiliate link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. And make sure to hit the subscribe button because summer's coming, which means there is going to be some bus videos coming for you guys. Thanks for watching.